Yo, check it. Hey, yo, what's up? Data Zero back for another video, checking in with the fam. Hopefully, you are checking in too, seeing this video. We're gonna be looking at MC Genie Spy overall stock and crypto market. We got the key levels for you, technicals and fundamentals that you need to know as a trader and investor. Tomorrow is an absolutely huge day for the market. I'm gonna explain all of this and more in this video, but let's not waste any more time and hop in the charts, facts, data. Let's go. All right, what is up? You are back for another video with Data Zero. In this video, we're looking at AMC, Jamie, and Spy, the meme stocks and overall stock and crypto market. This video is not financial advice, should not be taken as such. Please do your own research and due diligence before buying any stock or crypto asset. With that being said, let's go and hop in the charts, facts, and data showing y'all what's going up for the meme stocks and stock market and crypto. So first, we wanna look at fundamental data for AMC and GME. We're not gonna go off of Fintel right now because if you look, they're only giving reports as of early as one day ago. So Fintel right now is lagging and not really giving us the reports. This could just be my ape brain getting all tinfoily, but ladies and gentlemen, I think that they know we watch the short shares on Fintel, and Fintel sometimes delays the reports and allows us to not really see what's going on in the background. We already get um, information that is skewed and information that is delayed, so anything they can do to try to hide information from us so we can't do analysis is helping them and benefiting them. But we do have a good site right here called Chart Exchange, absolutely free, letting us know how many short shares they have, and they do have 3.4 million short shares for GME stock, sitting at about 0.41% cost to borrow. Again, cost to borrow on GME stock, extremely low. We want to see those cost to borrow levels go up. Why do we want to see meme stock cost to borrow levels go up? Because it costs more to short the stock. It lets us know how much bearish pressure is going to be applied if we know how many short shares there are. Also, it lets us know what's going on in the background as far as liquidity. We know liquidity is drying up when we see those cost of borrows levels start to spike. So we want to see that cost of borrow go higher because that means AMC and GME are prone to rallies. Now, GME cost of borrow is still remaining low. This happened to AMC after it got its dilution. It took a while, but eventually liquidity dried up again as it does because apes buy and hold. And then you start to see those levels go up again. So we're looking for a GME cost of borrow to go up. Now, AMC cost of borrow as far as shares and cost of borrow, we have 800,000 short shares available to short for AMC right now. 1.95% cost of borrow. And again, this could change as early as tomorrow morning. Now you can see that cost of borrow dropped to the downside for AMC. We, we do want to see that pick back to the upside. They may take advantage of that and get a large amount of shares. So we want to watch how many shares they have available to short because if the cost of borrow is cheap, that means they could uh, scoop some shares up for a little bit lower price. So right now they have 800,000 shares. As far as Fintel saying, and again, Fintel's kind of broken right now, but roughly we can say they had about 1.6, 1.5 million short shares to start the day. They dumped about 400 to 500,000 short shares on AMC stock today. And that is why we've seen that downward pressure because they are trying to push us belief the 200 moving average. And I'm gonna talk about that later in this video. Now, as far as fundamental data as well, I wanna talk about this real quick. We have a huge speech from the Fed tomorrow Everyone needs to be aware of this. This could literally make the market market dump or pump. So you want to be aware of this and have this in the back of your mind because things could get very, very volatile tomorrow. And I'm gonna talk about this more in the spy section of this video. But that is fundamentals that we're gonna be looking at. Now let's go ahead and hop into the technicals for GME and show you all what I'm expecting for GME, AMC, and SPY based off the technicals. Now, you can see right now, GME is in a bit of a bear flag, unfortunately. We have this move to the downside, then we have this algorithm trading, and then another move to the downside. You can see that these are roughly the same angle of degree, which means that algorithms are in play. So again, you have this move down, this channel right here, which is a bear flag, and that's going to lead to another move down. Now, the question is, is GME bottoming right here, or do we need to see another move down because of the bear flag? And I, unfortunately, Again, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I have to tell you what's coming. That way you can prepare for it, maybe so you can buy the dip. Again, this is not financial advice. Make you do your own research, but then maybe you buy the dip. Or so you can maybe do puts. That way you can get more cash to stack more shares in the long run. Either way, it is not my decision or choice or really any of my business. But you can see that I think we're going to be moving to the downside, in my personal opinion, based off this white dotted line prediction that I have for you here in the morning. I think we're going to be dropping down 
down to about 2190. We have a lot of support around that 2190 level. We also have support at 2207. I think we're going to be dropping down to retest some of those levels, moving to the downside, breaking down out of this bear flag, and then getting a recovery back to the upside. Again, I told you in yesterday's video that we had multiple gap fills to the downside, and we did fill those gaps at the end of the day. I told you those gaps would be in play. That's why gaps are very, very important to track. Those are liquidity zones. The algorithm is going to hunt for those gaps, and they always come into play. We came down and filled those gaps. I don't know the exact numbers off the top of my head, but they were around like 22, 15, or something like that. Um, but we had two gap fills to the downside that I told you about in yesterday's video. We came down and filled those at the end of the day, so those gaps are filled. We do have two more gaps for GME stock that are to the downside, but I really don't think the $17 gap is to be worried about right now. If we do have anything else to worry about, it would be this gap at about $21.59. I don't think we're going to be coming down to fill that gap just yet, but it could be a possibility if we do see some price structure start to build out. Now, as far as I'm seeing here, it does look like we're going a little bit more bearish. Again, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I have to tell you what's going on. Weekly MACD is red, and you can see four hour MACD is red as well. So we could see some downside to come and fill some of these gaps before another move to the upside. But overall, I am bullish on GME stock on the macro. GME is above its 200 moving average here on the daily time frame. If you go ahead and pop that on in the daily time frame, you can see that we're above the 200 moving average. And the 200 moving average is way down at about $18. So we could come all the way down to $18 and still be extremely bullish on GME stock. GME stock had such a big move to the upside that if we did have some major pullback to come fill that gap, it would still be extremely bullish. Stocks above the 200 moving average are generally looked at as bullish assets. And that is a signal, again, to traders that this asset is bullish and changing on the macro and going to go into an uptrend. Again, GME also has a ton of cash sitting on all of that cash. They could literally make so many maneuvers. Andrew Left literally stated that's one of the reasons he's not shorting GME stock anymore. It is a big deal, and I think GME is not going anywhere in my personal opinion. And you're seeing the fundamentals improve, and you're also seeing the macro technicals improve, and that means an overall uptrend is going to be occurring. And I do believe that GME has bottomed and will be pushing up. Again, when in doubt, zoom out. We have this overall macro falling wedge, which could see GME push up to much, much higher price targets. We have a gap fill all the way up at this $71 level. So this is what I'm looking at as far as GME on the short and long term. Again, I think we're going to see a move to the downside here. Come down and test some of these lower levels of support and resistance, which I mentioned earlier, 2207 and 2190, and then get a bounce back to the upside. The reason why I believe that is this overall bear flag structure here. We also have like a death cross here on the uh, five minute time frame. Um, you can see that we have some other bearish signals as well. Like if you go ahead and go to the super trend and then come down to these lower time frames, you can see that we're starting to get these bearish signals as well. Um, but it doesn't mean that we're going to be having a big drop to the downside, possibly just to this gap fill at the low end and then starting to get a recovery as GameStop has held the $20 level very, very well, only dipping below it briefly here. And then, of course, back when we had the run up, but we've been holding above $20 very very well so that's what i'm looking at for gme stock let's go ahead and move into amc and show y'all what's going on for amc based off of the technical so amc again getting shorted to the downside today they started shorting it a heavily again about four to six maybe five six hundred thousand short shares dumped on amc stock i don't have the exact numbers because fintel is acting a little messed up but they were dumping that to the downside. That's why we had this falling wedge price structure. I explained that in the live stream and why we got this falling wedge price structure. Now you can see that we moved to the downside and we're starting to get some buy signals here on the smaller time frames. We're starting to get an overall uptrend. We're breaking out of the falling wedge, which leads me to believe that we're probably going to see a move to the upside for AMC stock, a continuation up here in pre-market and in the morning. So what I have for AMC stock is a little bit 
of a push up in pre-market, coming back down maybe due to some short pressure, and then possibly coming back down to retest as low as 490, then getting a bounce to the upside. If you look at what's going on at AMC stock as far as trading view is concerned, you can see we have a lot of buy orders here at like 483, 470. So there's a ton of buy orders waiting down at these lower levels in the fours to buy AMC up if it did see a big pullback to the downside. Let's say GME started to pull back. That caused bearish in the algo for AMC and it helped the shorts push AMC down and therefore AMC had to hit these lower targets then we have buy orders that would probably help us snap back to the upside you can see that every time that AMC has been pushed down we've been getting pushed right back to the upside and we've been getting bought right back up we came down here bought right back up huge bounces back to the upside bought right back up so you can see every time we come down on those lows people are buying because this is an overall accumulation range and my personal opinion we're accumulating before another move to the upside and that lends credence to that this is an accumulation range seeing people buy the dips and creating an overall floor also lending credence that this is the beginning of a bull run where you're building a base so you can move to these higher levels so everything looks good as far as the macro is concerned again i keep touting the same things that we have the weekly buy signal still valid if that disappeared that'd be something to worry about but it's not still have green weekly macd still have green monthly macd so again we have a lot of things on our side now as far as the 200 moving average is concerned we do want to see a break above and hold the 200 moving average i believe this is what the short sellers are fighting they don't want us above the 200 moving average they don't want us confirming that to traders hey this is bullish crossing over the 200 moving average with a golden cross you can see here the 200 moving average right now is sitting at 497 as far as Weeble is concerned, and the 50 moving average is sitting at 505. I want to see AMC break back above the 200 moving average, which is at 497. That would be bullish. And then to see it start to move up, we need to break above 505. These are key levels right now. Every cent counts for AMC stock, and these are key levels, and we want to see a break above that. I also want to see green daily MACD. That would help out a lot. We have this bearishness on the daily MACD. I want to see that start to go away. We almost had it flip green here, almost got across, but couldn't quite pull it off. I want to see green daily MACD and above the 200 moving average and above the 50 moving average. That would be extremely bullish because then we have the golden cross. We're above the 200 moving average and green daily MACD. You're most likely going to see a move to the upside. Now, I showed you in yesterday's video that even the analysts are technically bullish on AMC stock saying that it's undervalued. I believe AMC is undervalued. When I went to the movies the other day and I showed you on that video, make sure you check that video out if you haven't. But I showed y'all the movies were packed. It's literally thriving. Also, they're diversifying and AMC is taking market share. The fundamentals are greatly improving. The macro technicals are greatly improving. I know it's not what you want to hear because you've been waiting so long, but I've been talking about this on the live stream. My biggest trades, my big winners, they take time to set up. The Bitcoin trade, just for an example, I had to buy Bitcoin for quite some time before it started to move up. I was accumulating on the downtrends. And again, this took over two years because I started buying in 2022, accumulating down on the downtrend all the way into 2023 and didn't sell way later into 2024. Again, you had to accumulate for three years the total that trade took just for an example so these bigger trades these big money trades these big winners those are the ones that take time and we have been holding amc for quite some time the reverse split also has hurt some people but people have averaged down we have had time to accumulate some people have got their average very very low some people started new accounts and some people are completely new to amc and they do have low averages and they're holding at the bottom not financial advice but i would try to have my average underneath six dollars because if this thing does run like i'm gonna like i think it is you're going to see profit from that. And again, we have multiple gap fills to the upside. You've seen time and time again on the micro how gaps get filled. Macro gaps get filled as well. We have multiple gaps to the upside. I believe AMC is bottoming and it's trying to build a bullish base and going to trend to the upside. And all of the things we're seeing here on the daily time frame on the macro are confirming that. We just need to get above the 200 moving average and the 50 moving average. And then we won't have that ceiling over our head. So next time we run, we really will start to run. Every time we had the 
a ra rally. We've had the 200 moving average as a ceiling over our head. Finally confirming that a support would allow us to move to the upside to levels that we haven't seen in quite some time. So this is what I'm looking at for AMC. As far as tomorrow is concerned, I think we can see a continuation to the push to the upside with this falling wedge. I want to see us break back above 497 to confirm the 200 moving average. And then we can start to get really bullish at 505. In between those levels of support is 502. If we did move to the downside and did have downside targets, I would be looking at 472 as major support not only is there buy orders around that range but it's a major level support so i'd be looking at 472 as a level of support if we did have a big move to the downside again let's say gamestop got bearish it took us down um or something happened and it took us down those would be the levels i'd look at as support but i don't think that's going to be the case in my personal opinion um, again they're trying to set us up for friday fridays are the important days to try to push the stock down so do remember that max pain is sitting at about five dollars for amc so that's what i'm looking at for amc stock um remember we do have this major meeting tomorrow let's go ahead and move in to spy and show you what's going on with spy now we have that fed speech tomorrow so it could throw spy off literally could send spy pumping but i actually think we're going to see bearishness you can see here that traders were already kind of skittish um, of waiting this overall speech and also treasuries rose so stocks are being weighed down so we have bearishness going into this meeting i think that bearish sentiment will continue i see the overall fractal has been tracking you guys have been tracking this with me this thing's been tracking amazingly that i gave you on the weekly outlook and prediction that bearish divergence is starting to play out and getting corrected um, you can see that the stock has really flattened out and is starting to move down. I think that continuation to the downside is going to continue. What I think we're going to see, though, is a little bit of a bounce, then maybe around the speech a pullback. I think we'll rally into the speech, and then maybe the speech will happen or something during the speech, and then we'll pull back. But I think this overall fractal is going to continue to play out. The major, major level that you're looking at for SPY is that 55664 level. If you move above that level, you're going to see a continuation to the upside. If you break below that level, you're going to see a big move to the downside. What I think is going to happen is we're going to try to use it as support, push up, and then end up breaking below it. I think this could continue into Monday. So if you're trying to play puts um, or calls, be very, very, very careful because the meeting is literally making it more of a gamble because it could shift momentum very, very fast. The meeting happens at 10 p.m., eastern standard time and i will be streaming that so make sure you guys tune in also hit the like button and subscribe to get live predictions and updates because i do go live and drop videos so this is what i'm looking at for spy i do think we're going to see a little bit of recovery um again the stock was getting kind of oversold um we're seeing our side start to trend up i think we're going to see a little bit of recovery before an overall pullback to the downside in my personal opinion but we have to watch because that speech could really mix things up so we're going to be watching live to determine what's going on and giving you the technicals as they come but this is my prediction in my personal opinion so that's what i'm looking at for spy let's move into btc and wrap up this video so bitcoin at sixty thousand five hundred. of course we want to see it back above sixty one thousand three hundred. that's the level to let me know that bitcoin is flipping back bullish we have a lot of fear in the crypto market um i showed you guys the crypto market fear and greed i just tried to pull it up but it came off I showed you guys the fear and greed. It's sitting at fear. Also, that's letting us know that this is trying to build a bottom, in my personal opinion, around these levels. Now, you want to be very, very careful because Bitcoin is literally on the edge of a cliff and starting to show some signs of bearishness like that death cross on the daily time frame but overall if we zoom out even further you can see that this could be a bullish flag consolidation leading us to have a pop to the upside now as far as the macro is concerned i do think bitcoin is very very bullish on the macro and over time it is going to continue its trend you can see that the overall uptrend has been up so i think that's going to remain intact over time and i am very very bullish on bitcoin and the overall cryptocurrency market but this is pretty much everything 
everything I have for you guys. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to help support the channel. Leave a comment down below. If you want to support in a different way, you can check out the merch. We did get some new drops. Battle of 502 shirts available. Again, this has been an absolute battle for AMC at 502, consolidating at these levels. So we have Battle of 502 shirts. Go ahead and check out the link in the comment section below. We're always making drops. And I appreciate it if you watch the end of the video because it really helps out. And if you leave a comment, that'd be great. And as always, y'all, have fun. Stay safe. Make money. Peace out. All right, y'all, that was the video. If you found it informative, go ahead and drop a like. Press subscribe for more content like this. I appreciate you if you watch the end of the video because so few people watch to the end, and that helps me out so much. And you get to see everything in its entire context. Again, if you want to support the channel, just leave a comment down below. Leave a like, press subscribe. And as always, y'all, I couldn't do this without y'all, so I'm greatly appreciative, and that's why I say it all the time. You already know what it is. Have fun. Stay safe. Make money. Peace.